Come sail with me and Holland America Line on board Osterdam around the Adriatic. I'll show you around this beautiful ship, along with the accommodation on board and the fabulous entertainment and amazing food. We'll also explore some of the spectacular sights and visit ports which are considered by many to be the gems of the Adriatic. In this first episode, I make my way from London Heathrow to Athens to join Holland America Line's Osterdam as we set off on a seven-night Adriatic Gems itinerary. I'll share some tips about embarking on a fly cruise and I'll show you something different to do in Athens. We'll also explore some of this wonderful ship along with my cabin and some other of the sweet accommodations on board. Plus, I find out just how good the food is on Holland America Line. I started my journey to join Osterdam by flying from London Heathrow. As I was on an early flight to Athens, I took advantage of British Airways overnight bag drop and this made check-in for my 6am flight so much smoother. Since I'd already parked my car, I was able to head directly to the Sofitel, which was just a five minute walk from where I dropped my bag. On arrival, I found I was upgraded to a deluxe room at the Sofitel, which was a nice surprise. But as I arrived late into Heathrow, I didn't really get the chance to fully explore the hotel and its amenities. But I'll share more about my room in a separate video if you're interested. As this was my first fly cruise for a while, I've put together some of my top tips for fly cruising. And you can find more information and tips on my blog. After a quick breakfast at the airport, it was time to board the plane. I opted for an aisle seat this time and brought my trusty loop earplugs which are way less expensive to lose than airports. After about a four hour flight, I arrived in Athens just before noon and took a taxi straight to my hotel in Ammonia. The taxi ride from the airport took around 45 minutes and cost approximately 45 euros. The hotel had a small rooftop terrace and I was pleased to see I could get a glimpse of the Acropolis. I'll provide a more detailed hotel room tour in a separate video. I didn't have long in the hotel to freshen up before I needed to be back out for my pre-booked excursion. As I'd already visited Athens and the Acropolis on a previous cruise port visit, I was looking forward to doing something different this time. So I made my way to Monastiraki Square to meet my guide. I highly recommend this food tour I booked through Get Your Guide. It included numerous food stops and took me to parts of Athens I wouldn't have discovered on my own. So we started with two types of freshly made Spanakopita and then visited the fish market. This was followed by some traditional Greek coffee and if you like your coffee strong, you will love this. We also had Greek yogurt with stewed fruits. Then we moved on to our next venue where we tried some cured meats, stuffed vine leaves and at one point shots were involved. We then stopped at a, thankfully, air-conditioned restaurant on a quiet side street where we enjoyed learning about Greek wine, various types of olives, olives oil and balsamic vinegar and had lots of tastings. Our penultimate stop included a meal consisting of hieros, Greek salad, hummus and Greek beer. And then our final stop was dessert in the form of lukomades, which I'd been so eager to try and I wasn't disappointed. But these weren't even the best ones I was to try on this trip, but more about that in a later episode. If you're interested in this Get Your Guide tour, I've put a link in the description below and there's a full write-up on my blog. After we finished the tour, I realized that the food and an early start had really caught up with me. So I took a taxi back to the hotel to rest before boarding the ship the next day. In the morning, I couldn't resist going back to the rooftop terrace to watch the sun rise over Athens before enjoying a Greek breakfast at the hotel. If you're sailing from Athens, you'll probably pick up your ship at the port of Piraeus, which is about a 40 minute taxi ride away. Piraeus is a really busy port, so it's important to let your taxi driver know which terminal you'll be sailing from. Today, we were sailing from Terminal C. Embarkation was smooth and well organised. We dropped our bags at the terminal and then went to an air-conditioned waiting area where water was provided. And the entire check-in process took around 30 minutes. Once 
Once on board, I headed straight to my cabin, which was spacious and airy, and I've posted a full cabin tour and a review in another video, and the link is in the description below. While on board, I also had the chance to tour some of the other suite accommodations on board, including a midship Neptune suite, which had a large bathroom and shaded balcony. My favourite suite, however, was the aft Neptune suite with its beautiful wraparound balcony and stunning views. Once again, you can find a full tour of these two suites on my channel with links in the description below when they're live. After exploring my cabin, I headed up to the Lido market for lunch. I was really impressed with the variety of food options available, whether it's a quick snack or freshly made pizza or sushi or a hot meal. Then there was some time before sail away at 5 p.m. for me to explore the ship while it was still quiet as most passengers were still embarking. Osterdam was launched in 2003, so it has some quirky features and a unique charm of the older ships, which I really love. I was especially impressed with these fish seats in the Lido bar and also this taco bar. I made my traditional single visit to the gym just to film and in the process I stumbled across a secret deck at the front which I'll later discover is going to be the perfect place, albeit a bit breezy, to film a sail in to Kotor. And then it was on to explore some more to quickly check out the other spaces on board for relaxing, entertainment, drinks and dining. I put a full ship tour together in a separate video and the link will be in the description below when it's live. And after my quick tour of the ship, it was time to freshen up for sail away. As I said, Piraeus is a very busy port and it seems the pilots only stay on for a short time and not even until the breakwater, which makes for a very short commute. Now the hub of activity during sail away on Osterdam seemed to be the sea view pool at the aft, where there were great views, cocktail specials and sail away entertainment. Let me share with you a little bit more about this itinerary on this part of the trip. Our first port of call will be Dubrovnik in a couple of days, so we've got a sea day ahead tomorrow. But this evening we dined in Vistas, which is the ship's main dining room, and it's a beautiful split-level dining room. Now I'd heard a lot about Holland America Line's port to plate and global fresh fish program, which offers more than 80 varieties of fresh fish sourced locally from across their worldwide network. So I had to try the crab cakes and also the Morimoto a piece lobster tails. Although there was a $25 surcharge for the lobster, it was well worth it. And this is the best lobster I think I've ever had on a cruise ship, if not ever. It might have been the look on my face when presented with a glorious stack of lobster tails, but our waiter was kind enough to prep the lobster tails for me, which was much appreciated. After such a fantastic meal, I only had room for a cheese plate. Now, one of my tests for cruise ship food quality, apart from Eggs Benedict and a fillet steak, is the quality of the cheese plate offering in the main dining room. Now, Holland America Line passed this with flying colours. There was a well-balanced variety of cheeses with lovely accompaniments and the portion size was just right. And to end the night, I took advantage of Osterdam's wraparound wooden promenade deck and more about that in a later video. And then I watched the sunset at sea before heading to bed. Make sure you subscribe and join me next time in episode 2 where I spend my first day at sea on board Osterdam. I'll explore the array of activities available, show you more of the dining venues on board, both what's included and fine dining. We'll tour the galley and have some Royal Dutch tea and go beer tasting, although not at the same time. And then we'll end the night with fine dining in Canaletto, some dueling pianos and a spectacular Adriatic Sea light show.